Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. Today's episode is sort of a multi-parter. It is first the story of a folktale, and then an interesting example of that story come to life. In Japanese Buddhism, there's a folktale known as the Straw Millionaire. It tells the story of a man who is able to achieve great riches using only a singular piece of straw. The subject of this folktale is Daiatsu no Suki, an impoverished peasant who prays to Guanyin, the goddess of mercy. He begs Guanyin to help him escape poverty. She tells him to take the first thing he touches on the ground with him and travel west. He stumbles on his way out of the temple and grabs a piece of straw. While traveling, he catches a horsefly that was bothering him and ties it to the straw. In the next town, the buzzing horsefly calms a crying baby, and the thankful mother exchanges it for three oranges. Taking the oranges, he continues on his journey and encounters a dehydrated woman. He gives her the oranges, and she thanks him by giving him a rich silk cloth. The peasant meets a samurai with a weak horse. The samurai demands the silk cloth in exchange for his horse. The peasant nurses the horse back to health and continues west. A millionaire is impressed by his horse and invites him to his home. The millionaire's daughter turns out to be the same woman he's saved with the oranges. Seeing this as a sign, the millionaire insists that the peasant marry his daughter, making him a millionaire, all starting with a piece of straw. This trope of upcycling might sound familiar. In fact, nearly all Legend of Zelda games follow this long trading quest strategy and developers cite the story of the Straw Millionaire as an inspiration. Or, for you Office fans, you might recall that Dunder Mifflin had an office garage sale, where Dwight Schrute attempts to walk away with the most expensive item there by uptrading items with his co-workers, beginning with a thumbtack and working all the way up to a $150 telescope, which he then trades for <laughs> a packet of Professor Copperfield's Miracle Legumes from Jim's Table. Magic beans <laughs> labeled miracle legumes. Oh, that show is hilarious. But did you know that this actually happened in real life? No, not the miracle legumes, but this uptrading straw millionaire strategy allowed a Canadian man in the span of one year to go from a single red paper clip to owning a two-story farmhouse in Saskatchewan. The intrepid Canuck, Kyle McDonald, offered a trade online for his red paper clip and someone was willing to trade him his red paperclip for a pen that kind of looked like a fish. He then traded the pen for a handmade doorknob, and then traded that for a small portable cooking stove, which then led to a small, older, used 100-watt Honda generator. He waited a few months, and was able to trade the generator for an instant party kit, essentially an empty keg that had a neon Budweiser sign atop it. He then was able to trade the instant party kit for a used Ski-Doo snowmobile, and oddly enough, from there, he was able to swap the snowmobile for a snow globe owned by rock legend Alice Cooper. And from that, he was able to trade it with L.A. Law and Major League actor Corbin Berenson, who is so randomly one of the foremost collectors of snow globes in the world. Who knew? And he wanted Alice Cooper's Kiss-themed snow globe. So, he offered our tradesman Kyle a role in one of his upcoming movies. It was called Donna on Demand. Never heard of it. But getting the role in a movie was not enough for our Canadian boy here. He found a town in Canada that was willing to trade him a farmhouse owned by the city as they wanted to hold a competition where local people could compete to get the movie role. So, Kyle made the trade. He traded the movie role and got a free house. Kyle actually lived in the farmhouse for several years but eventually decided it was time to move on. He ended up donating the house back to the city, where it was turned into a museum with a popular cafe on the first floor. Huh, that's kind of crazy. Who knew? So folk tales can indeed come true. And who knows what sort of magic you could trade for once you get your hand on those miracle legumes. <laughs> <laughs>